Welcome back to Lockfall Labs. With the basics out of the way, we can now get into how lock picking works. If you haven't checked out my previous video on how this lock works, see the card up top. Some of the concepts here might be needed to understand what's going on. If you've no idea why anyone would ever want to legitimately learn lock picking, you'd be happy to know that almost no crimes are committed where lock picking is used or needed. A brick is always faster. For us hobbyists, solving complex puzzles is the draw to this. And if puzzles interest you, then stick around. You may have seen lockpicking tools like the ones shown here. They can be purchased easily, made, or even improvised. The basics are just the tension wrench, the bent L shape of metal at the bottom, which we insert into the core, and some kind of hook shaped pick. You've likely seen these in other lockpicking videos, so I won't spend too much time here on the tools. There's tons of pick shapes, and at the end of the day, all you really need is something that fits in the lock, lifts the pins as high as they need to go, and doesn't lift them too high. Now let's take a look inside this lock and see what's going on. First, we're going to insert our tension wrench at the bottom of the core, so it's as out of the way as possible. Then give a medium amount of rotational force. This basically binds up one or more of the pins. For visual purposes, I highlight the most binding pin in red, but if you were picking, you wouldn't know this immediately. You might be wondering, why does a pin bind? Why don't they all bind up at the same time? Well, if a lock were perfectly manufactured, all holes were drilled exactly the same and in line, pins all exactly the same diameter, they would bind up together. But because of the slight manufacturing differences, or what an engineer has called acceptable tolerances, picking each pin stack one at a time is possible. Now let's get to work picking this lock. Our basic procedure is to keep some tension on the wrench and to use our pick to test each pin stack. If we feel a springiness, we move on until we find our, the most binding pin. Essentially that pin isn't ready to pick yet if it's springy. In our case, we can see our target in pin stack number four of being the bound pin. Pressing on the pins doing our testing, most pickers would say something like, nothing on one, meaning they feel normal spring pressure and don't feel a significant amount of binding. Nothing on two, nothing on three. All right, now pin four. Ah, a decent amount of resistance. So we give it a little extra push with our pick and we should get a nice click, meaning our top driver has been set correctly and will now stay above the shear line as long as you keep a similar amount or more tension with your wrench. I've colored now the set pins to be green so we can keep track visually, but a picker will usually keep a mental note of this and start to map out the lock in their mind. After setting a pin, we move on. We can visually see pin one is binding up, but likely if we were picking this lock, we would check pin five since we're pretty close. But the procedure is up to each picker. Nothing on five, so we move back to pin one and we get ourselves a nice click. Pin two, pretty much set for free, just brushing our pick under it. We get a click, we can move on to pin three, giving it a little extra lift and set. At this point, we should remember that we have set every pin but number five. So we could just jump there and a small little lift and the tension wrench gives away and we're open. If I was a good lock picker, I not only open the lock, but if I had to do it again, I should also remember the binding order. Pin four first, then pin one, then two, three, and last five. So subsequent pick attempts should take much less time. Lock pickers usually call that first attempt a blind pick, meaning you have little information about the binding order and ideally no information about the key. Almost every lock picking video you see on YouTube is not a blind pick less specifically mentioned and generally demonstrated by taking a new lock out of a package or a sealed box. Well, that's all there is to picking. Find the binding element. It's a concept that can be easy to pick up, but hard to master until you give it a shot. And most importantly, practice. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so I know to make more and consider subscribing if you want to be notified for future videos like this. Thank you.